Our brain wasn't just designed and built in one go like a big house. It's the outcome of millions of years of adapting, changing and developing. As its owner, us humans have evolved and adapted too. Instead of a big house, think of it more as a little bungalow that's had extensions and new parts added to it over the years. A chap called Dr Steve Peters created this model to help us understand how these areas of our mind work together or how sometimes they don't and how this determines our thoughts, feelings and actions. So first up, the chimp, whose fancy name is the limbic system. Think of the chimp as the emotional part of our brain. As Dr Steve puts it, it's the fast reacting systems within the mind that uses our feelings to jump to conclusions, often hijacking the facts and truth of a situation. You'll find this right at the base of our skull. And because of this, we know it's the part of our brain that developed first. Life for our early human ancestors involved a lot more regular threats and danger. Whether that was from tigers lurking in bushes, disease or injury. The most important role of our brain was to avoid risk and danger, to increase our chance of survival, so we could achieve the ultimate aim of getting our genes into the next generation. Our chimp still plays an important role in our survival today. Say we step out into the road and a car suddenly speeds out of a junction next to us. It's our chimp, with our fight, flight or freeze response, that kicks in, making us jump back to the curb, without our human conscious brain analysing the situation, instantly and instinctively, in just a fraction of a second. It's the part of our brain that wants to avoid any risk and danger. But do we face as many survival threats as our ancestors? Well, hopefully it's not too often that we face a tiger in the woods. And with the advancement of medical treatment and technology, disease and injury are less of a threat to our survival than they used to be. So the answer simply is no. However, Again down to technology, our lives are full of risk, personal and global. The ping of a mobile phone notifying you of a problem, 24-7 news channels, or the inner chatter of your chimp worrying. So this chimp of ours can be unhelpful. Have you ever lied to cover up a mistake? Wondered why everyone else is doing better than you. Thought, you're just no good at sport, so don't bother trying. This is the chimp talking, trying to persuade us to avoid risk and protect us. Much of our chimp chatter is trying to protect our reputation. Again, back in the early human years, our chance of survival was increased if we were part of a social group. If we were kicked out of the group, there was less chance that we'd survive alone. It's reassuring to know these emotional and reactive thoughts are normal, and we all have them. Because this is our inner chimp doing its job and protecting us from risk and danger. Good to know, eh? But the truth is, this cheeky inner chimpanzee can make life tough for us. We'll come back to the chimp later, but for now, on to the next part. The human. The human has doubled in size 
over the past 500,000 years. Oh, not our bodies, that would be scary. The human part of our brain, the prefrontal cortex. That may seem like a really long time, but given the universe is 13.8 odd billion years old, and the Earth is 4.5 billion years old, in human evolution, it's just the blink of an eye. You find this part of our mind, on the front edge of our brain, just behind the forehead. As it's grown and developed, it's formed folds to squeeze itself into the limited space of our skull, which explains the brain's wrinkly crinkly surface. The human is rational, objective, looking at the facts, and sensible. And this is the area of deep thinking, enabling us to work out puzzles, problems, and to think through tricky decisions, using facts and truths. It's the part of our brain that represents who you truly are, and what you believe to be right or wrong, and important in your life. You can probably start to see why the human and the chimp are sometimes in conflict. The last in the trio is the computer. When the human and the chimp go into action, they call upon the computer for advice. The computer is the memory bank, a storage area for our thoughts and behaviours that advise us of our previous experiences and knowledge. It recognises patterns and makes decisions for us, forming and storing behaviours and beliefs that we learn. The information stored in there can be helpful or unhelpful. So we can now recognise these three areas of our mind. The chimp, emotional, survival, reacts. The human, sensible, objective, looking at the facts, and rational. And the computer, the important advisor and memory bank.